Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. It is Mindy here, and today I'm really excited to talk about a topic that I love, and that topic is coffee. I'm gonna talk all things coffee fragrance and share with you some of the fragrances that I've explored over the past couple weeks, couple months, and those fragrances that I'm really enjoying. But first, I just wanted to share a little bit of background on my experience with coffee. Um, I've always really enjoyed coffee ice cream when I was younger, the scent of coffee, but I never really got into coffee itself. And primarily because I would drink hot coffee and basically get third degree burns on my tongue and I just never really liked that. It always seemed too hot for me and I just wasn't into it. Fast forward to meeting my husband, then boyfriend. Um, he really absolutely loved coffee and to appease him, to just get time with him, I would go to the coffee shop, we would sit there and drink, and it didn't take long for me to discover that I actually really loved iced coffee. I liked some of those blended drinks with a lot of sugar in them, uh, but I tried to stay away from those and just do the iced coffee, which I loved. And that love sort of transitioned into us going to Starbucks or a local coffee shop every single Friday morning before work. We've done that for, I don't know, eight, nine, 10 years maybe. It was really amazing for us to connect on Friday mornings before we would go into the office and it was an incredible way to really start off the weekend. So we did that for, like I said, eight, nine, 10 years and had so much fun doing it. Unfortunately, that's one of the things that I miss the very most through the pandemic. We have not been for coffee since before March 12th of 2020, and I'm really excited for when things get to um, some level of normalcy to go back and have that routine again in our schedule. So the first couple fragrances that I wanted to talk about today are Roses Vini and Intense Cafe. You're probably thinking, Mindy, why are you looking at Roses Vini? This is not a coffee fragrance, and you're right. Um, in Roses Vini, we have lemon, water notes, rose sugar, vanilla, white musk, and cedar. And in Intense Cafe, there is floral notes, rose, coffee, vanilla, white musk, and amber. And Intense Cafe is made by Montal, where Roses Vini is made by Mansara. And to be completely honest with you guys, I pick up rose, I pick up vanilla, I pick up a little bit of woodiness, not a lot of coffee. This one has coffee in it, but they smell identical to me. I've seen other people mention that. I had my Roses Vini sample first, um, didn't really feel the need to get Intense Cafe, but I didn't really think that there would be an identical fragrance to this one. And I really wanted to test that out just, just to know and for my own awareness. And truly, I found that exact thing. I really can't differentiate between the two. I've worn them on different hands, tried to test them out a couple times, and they are so, so similar. I do sort of feel like the name Intense Cafe is slightly misleading because I do not pick up a whole lot of coffee in this fragrance, really not at all to my nose. Um, it says it's in there, so maybe it is, but I don't pick it up. And you know, of course, the same with Roses Vini, it's not a listed note. These are very, very similar, but I don't pick up coffee in either one of these. So um, I like both of these fragrances. I've tested them on my skin, I've worn them a couple times, and while I do enjoy them, I haven't really enjoyed them enough to feel compelled to get a full bottle. Now my experience has been about the same with Gentle Fluidity Gold by Maison Francis Kirkjohn. Um, it has a very similar scent profile to both of these, so I haven't felt the need to really explore getting that into my collection. I've tested it a couple times, and between the three of these, I don't know that I would add them. If I considered it, I might consider Intense Cafe, but I'm not there yet. I'll have to test it out a little bit more and see if it's full bottle worthy. But at this point, I'm only adding fragrances that I truly, truly love into my collection, and these haven't met that just yet. I know a lot of people totally love them. I would love to smell these on other people. I appreciate the artistry that went into these fragrances. They're lovely fragrances, but at this point, not full bottle worthy for me. That's Intense Cafe and Roses Vini. The next fragrance I wanted to talk about briefly is Good Girl by Carolina Herrera. And this fragrance has a coffee note at the top. I don't necessarily pick up that coffee note necessarily. There are a lot of 
different notes in this fragrance and I'll list them up here. Um, there's tonka bean, cacao, sandalwood, vanilla, just a lot of notes and this is a lovely fragrance. This is one that I smelled in the store back in 2019 and asked for it for Christmas. Um, but then I found myself not reaching for it all that often because I have other fragrances that I enjoy more. Um, but this is a nice scent. It smells just floral, it smells pretty, it smells alluring, um, maybe even a little sexy. That being said, I do enjoy this fragrance. The bottle is so awesome. It reminds me of you know, the days where we would go out, we would wear heels, we'd get dressed up and feel really good about ourselves. So I'm hoping that day um, comes here soon um, when things start to settle down from the pandemic. Again, that's Good Girl by Carolina Herrera. Don't pick up much of the coffee note quality, but I did want to mention it. The next fragrance I wanted to touch on briefly, I've talked about this one before, is Rebel by Rihanna. And this is one that is very affordable. I bought it simply because I was curious about the coffee note. And <laughs> this one is very strong at the initial blast. I think it could be considered maybe a little overpowerful or off-putting to people but it actually dries down to sort of a beautiful chocolate covered strawberry. You might be able to get that coffee there in the background, um, a little bit of patchouli as well. This is a very nice fragrance. This is one that I'm sort of slapping myself on the wrist for not reaching for a little bit more often because I do really enjoy that sweet, delicious dry down. It just isn't one that I'm reaching for, and so I'll make an effort to do that just a little bit more. This is a nice fragrance. It's an inexpensive fragrance and one that I enjoy. Now the next three fragrances I'll touch on together. I have Prerogative by Britney Spears. I have Black Opium by YSL, and I have Love by Sofia Vergara. And all of these fragrances are sort of compared to one another, and I've talked about each one of these at one point or another on my channel before, so you can go back and see my opinion on each of them, um, but I'll touch on them briefly here. Britney Spears tends to be um, what you typically see from a Britney Spears fragrance, and I don't mean that in a bad way. It's sweet, it's flirty, it's fun, it's girly, and it's got depth to it, but not as much depth as Black Opium. So if you're really going for sort of a well-rounded fragrance that has a lot of character, a lot of depth, I would recommend more so Black Opium. Um, but Britney Spears is beautiful, it's inexpensive, and one that I actually really enjoy wearing. It's an easy reach for me, it's one that smells nice, and I think it's a crowd-pleasing scent that a lot of people would enjoy. Now I feel that same way about Love by Sofia Vergara. This is also sort of a fruity scent with a little bit of coffee in the background, um, a little bit of depth, but not as much as Black Opium, at least from my experience. But this too is a really nice fragrance and I could actually see that some people would like uh, Love by Sofia Vergara a little bit more than Black Opium. I think it might be a little bit of an easier wear for some people. Um, for me, between the three, <laughs> I don't know, that's tough. I think it would be, that's tough. I'm not gonna do it. I think I need to think about that a little bit more to decide, um, but Black Opium tends to have a little bit more depth, maybe a little bit more character than all of these, maybe a little more rounded, as I've mentioned before, um, but all three are delicious fragrances. You can sense the coffee there in the background for each one. I would say it's most prominent in Black Opium but again, not um, coffee heavy like some of the fragrances that I'll touch on a little bit later. The next fragrance I wanted to cover briefly is We Plus by Kais Perfumes. And this fragrance has coffee in it. It has cacao, marshmallow, patchouli, Peru balsam, and Starex. I hope I said that right. Um, but the single thing that I noticed the most about this fragrance is that it smells like a s'more. It smells like you're at the campfire, you have the graham crackers, the marshmallow, the chocolate, they all melt together beautifully and it just smells delicious. I don't pick up a lot of coffee from Wee Plus. This is a delicious gourmand that I think people who really like that s'mores or that warm, cozy, chocolatey gourmand should really try this one because it does smell absolutely delicious. Again, not really much in the way of coffee. That note doesn't stand out to me, but I think you can pick it up there in the background just a little bit. 
I think every gourmand lover might want to check this fragrance out at some point or another. Yeah, this one just smells delicious. I think a lot of gourmand lovers would appreciate this. Not necessarily one that I would pick up for the coffee note, but if you're into that chocolatey, warm, gooey gourmand, this might be one for you. Another fragrance that has a coffee note is La Nuit Tresor. And if you've watched my channel before, you know that I enjoy this line. You know that I love this line by Lancome. Their bottles are stunning and the fragrance themselves are all stunning from my experience. This fragrance has patchouli, it has incense, lychee, praline, vanilla, caramel coffee, tonka bean, and licorice. And I do pick up the coffee, but maybe just a tiny bit there in the background. Similar to black opium, they don't smell the same, but similar to black opium where it sort of lingers there in the background. I don't pick it up prominently in this fragrance, um, but it does seem to be there. This is one that a lot of people would really enjoy. It's one that I love to smell. I would like on other people. I love wearing it on myself. And I also think that some people feel that this comes off a little sexy. Okay, the next fragrance I'll touch on really briefly is Taste of Kiss by Love Reeve. And it is a clone, dupe, whatever you want to call it, of La Nuit Tresor. I would definitely recommend trying out Taste of Kiss. If you didn't want to spend the money on La Nuit Tresor, this is an awesome alternative. It's inexpensive, it's affordable, and it's a very nice fragrance and comes in very, very close to the original La Nuit Tresor. Maybe slightly less rounded, maybe slightly less dense, maybe slightly less complex, um, but I think you can get that same exact vibe and this would be an awesome option if you wanted to see what this fragrance feels like. Now another fragrance that I wanted to touch on briefly, I've talked about this one on my channel before, is Hugo Boss The Scent Private Accord. And this fragrance has notes of mandarin orange, osmanthus and coffee at the mid, and cacao and tonka bean at the base. And this is a beautiful fragrance. I really enjoy wearing it. And I think a lot of gourmand lovers would also really enjoy and appreciate this fragrance. I primarily get the cacao. I get the mandarin orange at the top when I initially spray it, but that does dissipate for me. And it dries down primarily to a cacao, maybe a little bit of tonka bean that adds depth to it. And the coffee sort of lingering there in the background, but I pick it up slightly. And I have introduced friends to this fragrance who absolutely love it as well. They've gone ahead and picked up full bottles. So I do think if you're looking for a gift for somebody who is a gourmand lover, if they don't already have it, this might be one to consider picking up. That is Hugo Boss, The Scent, Private Accord. Okay, now we're starting to get a little bit deeper into those fragrances that do have that dominant coffee note. And the first one that I'll talk about is Coffee Break by Replica. And I have mentioned this multiple times on my channel before. This is one that I love. I will say that I did not pick up the coffee heavily on this fragrance when I first smelled it. I've worn it a few times now and I find it to be lactonic with a little bit of lavender there. You can pick up some woodiness. Um, and the coffee does come out over time. Coffee Break has notes of pepper, orange blossom, and patchouli at the top. It has lavender, coffee, milk, tonka bean and cm benzoin in the mid and vanilla cedar and vetiver at the base this fragrance was love at first sniff i do think a lot of coffee addicts might enjoy this fragrance okay the next two fragrances that i'm going to talk about do have a dominant coffee note and i would absolutely recommend them to somebody who is trying to get that coffee scent profile in a fragrance the first that I'll touch on is Arabica Roast by Be Layered. And this is one that I shockingly have not heard much about at all. I don't believe it's listed on Fragrantica at the moment. And I actually learned about this on Parfuma when I was playing around looking for coffee fragrances. The only listed note in this fragrance is coffee bean. And I definitely get coffee from this fragrance for sure. It has some sweetness as well, so it's almost like if you had a strong cup of coffee and you poured a light creamer into it with a little bit maybe of caramel flavor or vanilla flavor, that would be what this smells like to me. It has a little bit of sweetness to it, but this really does fill that need of a coffee scented fragrance. To my nose, this is unisex, so I think a man or a woman could wear it. When you walk into a coffee shop, that 
incredible aroma that you smell when you walk in, sort of that latte feel with a little bit of sweetness. This one really does fill that need for me. Now, I wanna give you the good, the bad, and the ugly on this one, and there is no ugly. There's definitely good. The good is that it smells beautiful. I think a lot of coffee addicts would appreciate this fragrance. I think a lot of gourmand lovers would enjoy this fragrance. It really is truly that coffee fragrance with a little bit of sweetness that I think a lot of people are looking for in a coffee fragrance. Now the bad, um, you know, I think it does lack a little bit on longevity and sillage. At least that's been my experience. It's my scent of the day again, maybe for the third time now. And I definitely pick it up and it smells beautiful, but I don't find it to be as strong as other fragrances that I wear. Now, it could be a couple things. One, I could be going nose blind. I don't find that to be the case with many of my fragrances, so I'm leaning against it being that. Um, the second thing I'd say is I've read a lot about Alexandria fragrances, and this could be the case with Be Laird as well, as I hear they could be sister companies. What I've heard is that Alexandria fragrance perfumes need to sit, they need to settle, they need to macerate before they really develop that strong scent profile. And I do have quite a few Alexandria fragrance perfumes in my collection, and I would agree with that. I have noticed that they seem to get stronger over time. I don't know if it's because they're made to order or if they, you know, they just make batches uh, a little differently than maybe a big, huge perfume house. I don't know what uh, the reasoning is, but I do think it'll be interesting to see if this one does get more powerful, more strong over time. In terms of the ugly, there really is no ugly with this fragrance. It is a nice one. I think a lot of people would enjoy it. That is Arabica Rose by Be Layered. Definitely a more noticeable coffee fragrance option. The last fragrance that I wanted to mention is Coffee Addict by Theodoros Colotinus. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, so I apologize if I'm not. And this is a fragrance that I've seen multiple times listed on Fragrantica and one that I wanted to check out. Now this fragrance has notes of coffee, cacao pod, caramel, and vanilla. And this fragrance is incredible. This was an absolute love at first sniff. I really enjoy the scent profile for this fragrance. Probably of all of the fragrances that I've talked about today, this has the strongest coffee scent profile. And it has a little bit of sweetness there lingering in the background. I saw somebody mention that if you were to drizzle um, a little bit of caramel over your cup of coffee, that's what this would smell like. And I do agree with that. To me, what this fragrance smells like is if you were to walk into a creamery or an ice cream shop that also makes coffee, sort of that blending of those scents together, that's exactly what it smells like. Okay, so I'm gonna be completely honest with this one. I haven't quite determined if this is one that I would consider buying a full bottle for. Again, I mentioned that I love the scent profile. I think it smells like a cup of coffee, like that creamer you walk into with coffee in it. It smells awesome. But I'm not sure I want to smell like this for the entire day or if I would want to if I would want to reach for this on a regular basis. I haven't been able to figure that out just yet. I feel like there are other options um, like the Arabica Roast by Be Layered or like Coffee Break by Replica that are a little more well-rounded in the sense that they're not so one-dimensional. And I do find this Coffee Addict fragrance to be a little one-dimensional. Again, I think a lot of people would really like this one. I just haven't decided for myself if this is one that I would add to my collection and want to reach for enough to justify buying the bottle, paying the shipping costs to get it here over to where I live. Okay, so that fragrance is Coffee Addict by Theodoros Kalotinus. I believe that's how you might say it. Apologies if it's not. Um, really an interesting, alluring um, fragrance that piques your curiosity. Just not sure if I'll reach for it enough to justify buying a full bottle. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed my coffee video. This one was really fun to make. I love everything coffee related. I love drinking coffee. I love smelling coffee. And I love playing with all of these coffee fragrances. Please let me know in the comments section below what coffee fragrances you are trying or testing out or enjoying. I'll definitely wanna give them a shot. I absolutely love interacting with you guys. It has been so fun creating a channel. Um, I appreciate you guys and we'll see you soon.